Stay tuned after the movie for B.C. Andrews Behind the Saga to get a look at the making of the film. Scan the QR code now for more on B.C. Andrews Dawn. Kidnapping and confronting Grandmother Cutler with the lies. She arranged for me to go to the Bernhardt School of the Performing Arts to do what I have always dreamt of, trained to be a singer. Even though I no longer believed in fairy tales, I was really here. I was in New York City. Hi, I'm Don Cutler. Oh, I'm Agnes Morris. <laughs> it's a pleasure. What? No luggage? Oh, I, I left it on the sidewalk. I wanted to make sure this was the right house. Honey, this is New York. If you left it on the sidewalk, it'll be gone in 30 seconds. Yes. <laughs> and you'll have complete use of the house. That is, if you can be respectful of people's privacy and property. Sit down. I hope you realize that I only let these rooms to students of the Bernhardt School of the Arts. Oh, isn't that divine? Yeah, I played Juliet off-Broadway in 46. My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love as deep. Bravo! <laughs> Actually, it's bravo when the thespian is a female. Now, I want you to know that I got a letter from your grandmother, Lillian, and she told me how much difficulty you have dealing with other people. But, but that isn't true. Well, I certainly hope it's not. But nevertheless, Lil recommended that I put you on house probation. And if you act out, I will send you back to Cutler's Cove to your grandmother. Probation? What does... Now, one other thing. The girl that you're going to be sharing a room with is a very, very talented young dancer. And if you do anything to upset her, any way, shape, or form, I assure you that you're going to be the one asked to leave this house, Missy. I won't be any trouble, I promise. That, I'll have you know, took me nearly a month to perfect. You nailed it. <laughs> Come sit. What's your name? Dawn. Well, Dawn, you're going to tell me every single thing about yourself. I'm Trisha. I'm a spoiled daddy's girl from upstate New York. I like James Taylor, Gordon Lightfoot, oh, and Led Zeppelin. Who are you into? Hi. I don't know. They're... All of them are pretty great. Have you seen any good movies lately? Uh, I, I've never... Holy crap, have you seen The Exorcist? No. Ah, I'll see it again just to wash your face. <laughs> Actually, um, the truth is I've never been to the movies. Well, how is that even possible? Yeah. Okay, well, what kind of TV shows do you like? I've 
never had a TV. Holy moly, what are you, Amish? <laughs> I mean, you do know what electricity is, though, right? <laughs> oh my god, Don. I'm so sorry, I was just joking around. I, I just never met anybody who might be Amish and no, never had... No, 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 Trisha. It's okay. I'm sorry, you, you didn't do anything wrong. It's just... I wasn't expecting you to be so nice. Well, reserve judgment. You haven't seen me on the subway during rush hour. You'd think I only knew one word. <laughs> be happy. You're in a good school with the grooviest people. I am. I just... I haven't had much reason to be happy for a while. I'll... I'll tell you all about it once you get to know me better. Well, telling me about it is how I'll get to know you better. It's just really heavy stuff. Broad strokes, baby. I'm a non-judger. Um, when I was a baby, I was kidnapped. Continue. Okay, so that is the art building. That's where all the painting studios are. But over here is the music building. That's where your piano class is. Who's your teacher? Um, Madam Steichen. Oh, no. <laughs> Talk about a hard ass. Whatever you do, don't look her directly in the eyes. She'll crack your knuckles with a yardstick until they bleed. <laughs> you are so easy to play with. <laughs> no, she's stern, but she's cool. Oh, hey, there's some people I want to introduce you to. Guys, this is Dawn. She's the best person in the world, so be friends with her. Dawn, this is Carrie and Steve, the worst people hey. in the world. Oh, turn it up. I love this song. Don. Yes, Agnes? Well, it's nine o'clock at night. Can you explain yourself? Explain? I was at school. I stayed late to work with my piano teacher. Why are you talking like that? Because I am auditioning for streetcar. So I have to stay in character. Because I am a woman of a world, young lady. Now, why don't you tell me where you really were? Just where I said I was, Agnes. Blanche. Blanche, okay, yeah. Is there some problem... Well, you know that I am accountable to your grandmother. I can't have you coming and going all hours of the day and night with God knows who, God knows when, doing God knows what. So I have created a sign-out sheet exclusively for you so I can track your comings and goings. Is that clear? What? We have never had a sign-in sheet. Oh, no, it's just for me. My grandmother wrote Agnes a letter with specific instructions. She's going to keep her grip on me even from five states away. So what else did she say in this letter? I don't know. Agnes didn't show me. Well, you know what we have to do, Don. Next time Agnes leaves the house, we'll just have to steal the letter and see what else is in it. Oh, I'm so excited. I hope I get in. What's going on? Michael Sutton's gonna be teaching in the fall semester. <laughs> oh, uh, who's he? <laughs> you wanna be a singer and you've never heard of Michael Sutton? <laughs> He's in like every hit show on Broadway. <laughs> Not too hard to look at, right? <laughs> I saw him in light of love. And if I tell you, he was absolutely many things. I'd study under Michael Sutton, but I can't say hell I'd do anything under him. Trash, you know, I don't like that kind of talk in this house. Oh, I don't think there'll be a whole lot of talking, Agnes. 
Okay, I've got a dish. We're gonna go to the theater to see the most thrilling play of the season. I'll tell you both about it when I get back. Have fun, Agnes. We'll see you later. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. Bye. Smells like Agnes. Oh, oh, oh. I can still smell Agnes's perfume, even though she's not here. <laughs> I remember this girl. She came home too late one night. We all wondered what happened to her. <laughs> Look at all these posters. She's heard in a lot of Broadway shows. Okay, bloody bloody blah. Very grateful. Da da da. Major nothing. Oh, here we go. As for the character of my granddaughter, it is not without promise. But be aware that in all the years under my tutelage, she's shown herself to be a rebellious and even promiscuous troublemaker. Dawn, you badass. Not a word of that is true. All my years under her tutelage, I only met the woman four and a half months ago. Boy, she is not at a loss for adjectives. I just don't get why she hates me so much. Well, for what it's worth, I don't buy anything she says in there. She's hated me since I was born. And ever since I was sent home, she's hated me even more. I have tried with her, Trisha. Hey, Dawn, listen. To hell with that old broad. Become a famous singer. You do that, and every time she reads your name, It'll be like she's drinking poison. Hmm? <laughs> Though anyways, one of Agnes's legs is shorter than the other. I can't believe you found that out like that. <laughs> I don't know how I find these things out. <laughs> I just picture you like a... <gasps> We're taking a family cruise out of the port up here. A cruise? Are, aren't you in school right now? Oh, we're cutlers. We do what we want. Anyway, Mommy and Daddy thought it would be nice to take the whole family out to a fancy dinner. And I guess that includes you. They're here? Yeah, they're waiting out in the limo. So, how are you liking your new lame school? Dawn! Who is this ridiculously charming girl? Oh, um, guys, this is my sister, Clara Jean Cutler. Oh, the famous Clara Jean. You know, Don has told me every single thing about you. Oh, yeah? And I suppose that makes you special or something? Listen, Clara Jean. You know, Don's doing better than any of us. So where do you go to school, Clara Jean? I happen to attend Emerson Peabody. Oh, no, you know what? I think I have heard of that. Talk about not lame. Don tells me you're in glee club there? Choir. Can't be as good as Don, though. <laughs> How the hell would you know? It's just that Don goes to the exclusive Bernhardt School for the Arts. I don't know. I could be wrong. Do you sing anywhere other than school choir? Anywhere that matters? <laughs> Try to find something decent to wear. We'll be waiting outside in the limo.
The city is much dirtier than I remember it. Yeah, in some places, but you get used to it. She, Don. You're so cosmopolitan. Don't pay any attention to her, Don. Have you seen anything on Broadway yet? How's Sissy doing? I wrote her a letter, but I haven't heard back yet. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, Sissy. Well, um, she had to be let go, I'm afraid. What? Your grandmother felt her work had become subpar. She did it out of spite. You have to hire her back. Sissy was the only damn friend I had there. And look, if, if grandmother has an issue with it, you can remind her that I know some dirty little secrets about her family that she liked to remain that oh, way. Oh, my goodness. I really must ask you to stop this, Don. What secrets? Careful, Philip. If I tell one, I might tell them all. Your grandmother's decisions are final, Don. And she's been a bit frail lately. You're so full of it, Don. You don't know any secrets. I don't know every secret. That's true. I might have known we couldn't share a simple, pleasant family dinner together. Did you think I would just forget, Mother? You and Grandmother are a lot alike. I don't think Lillian and I are the least bit alike. Well, you both do like your secrets. I mean, she's furious that I know Randolph isn't my real father. Hell, I, I pretty much blackmailed her into sending me away just to keep my mouth shut. Lillian will do anything to keep the Cutler name scandal free. That's not you too. Oh my God. Why can't we just be normal people, sharing normal pleasantries? Because this family is pretty damn far from normal. You're right, Don. Thank you for correcting me. We're not normal. We're cutlers. Stop and think about the privileges that name has given you. Privileges. You think I wouldn't give the cutler name up in a second if I could return to my family that raised me that loved me I mean my god I have a cutler grandmother who arranged my kidnapping and a cutler mother who let her do it and I have a cutler brother who I I won't tell Randolph if that's what you're worried about just tell me my father's name I will not that man was evil his name should be blotted out, do you understand? I will never utter it. Hey, beautiful. Jimmy? Oh my... Are you really here? I think so. <laughs> oh my... You know, it's funny. A few months ago, I'm running away from foster care, <laughs> and everyone's crazy to get me back in there. But the minute I turned 18, they couldn't get me out of there soon enough. <laughs> this is perfect. There's nothing that can keep us apart anymore. You can get a job right here in the city. We'll find you a place to live. Near school, so I can see you all the time. I'm only here for two days. What do you mean? Why? I joined the army. <laughs> I'm heading to boot camp tomorrow. I just couldn't go back without trying to find you again. Tell me you're joking. But I'm a foster kid who didn't finish high school. What's my future if I stay here? I don't care. I, I don't want you to go. I'll learn a trade in the army, okay? And I'll, I'll come back. I'll be able to get married, take care of a family. Don. Thank you. Don, just give me one second.
Think about it, Don. Everything's good. You're here, set up with this great school, and I finally have control in my way. Think of it as if I'm going to college. Yeah. College where they shoot at you. The war's over, Don. I'll see you tomorrow. I've been there. How come you never told me about this guy? I didn't even know you had a boyfriend. He's not really my boyfriend. If he's not your boyfriend, then... He's my brother. I mean, he was my brother. He... He's not anymore. Okay, I'll bite. When was he your brother and when was he not? Hey. You know that you can trust me. And I can see that you need to tell someone. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, you're, you're gonna think I'm a freak, but I've told you about the Cutlers, but I haven't told you about the family I grew up with. Trisha, you don't need to hold my hand. I'm not going for you, sister. I'm going for Mr. Sutton. I'm auditioning too. But you don't sing. Oh, hell, it sucks. So how many people can say that the audition for the famous Mr. Sutton? <laughs> uh, I appreciate how many of you have come out. I only wish I was able to accept all of you. Unfortunately, there's only 12 spaces. Any more than that, and I'd be cheating those of you I am able to accept. Is it just me, or is he insanely good looking? I think if he knows you feel like that, it'll only better your chances, Don. <gasps> Let's tell him. You wanna? I will kill you. I will kill you. Mr. Sutton? Mm -hmm. Yes, Miss... Trisha Kramer. Um, let's say I'm extra good. Would you consider private lessons? Hmm. Let's see how today goes. How about you? What's your name? Don Cutler. And what will you be performing? Um, yeah. I, I was planning on singing Amazing Grace. What key? I'd prefer to sing a cappella. Brave. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now. You, sir, and you, and you. Please step forward. The three of you are very good. However, the remaining students behind you will be my class this semester. Look 
in your eye, you want to take a ride, a bumpy ride, on the Sutton bus. Ew, no. <laughs> Don't. Oh my god, for a second I didn't recognize you. <clears throat> Don, you want to introduce us? <laughs> oh, um, yeah, Jimmy, this is Trisha, my best friend in the entire world. And Trisha, this is a uh, Jimmy, my, uh, just Jimmy. <laughs> Smooth. Don? We've got one more night. Wow. The army pays well, huh? <laughs> I saved my money. What else am I going to spend it on? <laughs> I just can't get over how handsome you look in this uniform. I can't get over how beautiful you look. Always. Do you really have to ship out tomorrow? Can't you just, like, go AWOL? I wish. I'm sorry for the short visit. Um, I just thought I should see you before I go. Wait, just... Just hold on. Hey, Jimmy, no. Not again. Remember, I'm not your sister. Listen, Don, really, I'm going away and you're going to this new school with a ton of new people and I don't want you to present me if... If what? You know, like... If some other guy comes along? <laughs> yeah, well... Jimmy, no! Obviously, I don't want that. But I also know that you have life to live. And when I get back... If you feel the same, then you can choose me then. Choose you now. This would be a whole lot different if I wasn't shipping out tomorrow. You know, some things are worth waiting for. I think you're probably right. Damn it. <laughs> I'm scared about you shipping overseas. It's only Europe. You better write me. <laughs> You want me to go in with you? No. That'd be worse. I'll just try and tell her what happened. Uh, wait, before I forget. I'm, I saw this and I thought of you. I'm, I meant to give it to you earlier, but... I bother trying to explain? Explain what? That you were out until three in the morning with your brother? He's not my brother. Wait a minute. How did you... You know, I don't know what is acceptable in Virginia. But I can tell you, up here, people still frown on stuff like that. Okay, I... 
Guess the walls have ears in this house. Look, nothing happened. We just fell asleep. Yeah, that's usually what happens afterwards. Listen to me. If anything like this happens again, young lady, I am going to send you home to your grandmother. Well, that's sweet. I hope I didn't interrupt any deep thoughts. Not at all. I've been thinking about you. Really? Yes. You're a raw talent I don't come across. Oh, I mean, coming from you. There's an innocence about your voice that so many singers try to fake, but yours is open and pure. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I, I think so. Well, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'll see you in class. You, you weren't interrupting anything important. <laughs> you know, I do have an hour to kill before my next appointment. Grab a coffee? Talk about that voice of yours? Uh... I'm sorry, I'm gushing about <laughs> you again, aren't I? You're just so unexpected. This is unexpected to me. Well, get used to it, because I think I found my star pupil. <laughs> I'll do my best. What's important is that you find your passion, and I can help you do that if you let me. I, I would love that, Mr. Sutton. Please, Michael. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> you know, I'm heading to an opening tonight in the village at Willowdale Gallery. It's supposed to be amazing. I think you should come. I'd be thrilled to. Perfect. 8 p.m. And speaking of time, I have to run. Oh. Don, I will see you tonight. I don't know. Maybe the other one? Nope. This is a dress. If I was going on a date with Michael Sutton, I'd be wearing this. I'm not going to tell you again, Trisha. It's not a date. I love Jimmy. I don't know, Don. I've been on a date or two, and this checks all the boxes. <sighs> Sorry to disappoint. Tonight's event is merely an intellectual endeavor between artists. You made it amazing. Whatever you do, don't leave without seeing your surrealist landscapes. Hello! How are you? This is fantastic. All right? You all right? <laughs> well, something uncool happened. Oh my god, Trisha. I'm the idiot of the universe. So you were right. It wasn't a date. I don't know. Do you guys usually bring other girls here on dates in the big city? In Paris, I'm sure they do. Yeah. And in certain parts of Utah, of course. And I was so humiliated. I just stood there. This didn't happen to end up in his face, did it? I was halfway home before I realized I was even still holding the damn thing. <laughs> Ugh. Well, we will keep it as a souvenir to always remember your magical night. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> hi. Oh, hi. Did you enjoy the opening the other night? Yes, it, it was terrific. <laughs> Grace. Well, it's our first one-on-one. -on -one. Are you ready? Yeah, mo most definitely. <laughs> Let's start with some breathing exercises, okay? Can, do you mind if I show you? Because it, it comes, it comes from here, right? Let's do it together. You can always have hope that I will be waiting through miles yet, loving through days yet to come.
sorry. That one always gets me, and on stage it ends with a kiss, so it just, it came naturally. No, th that's okay. I'm having a little get-together at my house tonight with some really interesting people. You think you want to join us? I definitely would. I'll write down my address. <laughs> Uh, bear in mind, uh, school has rules, and they probably wouldn't approve of me inviting a student to a cocktail party. And by probably, I mean definitely. They won't hear it from me. Then, tell no one. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to give me more than that for God's sake. His name is Alan, and what? Uh... I don't know. He's just really sweet. And you met him at the luncheonette? Yeah, we just struck up a conversation. He's a little older, about 30, I guess. 30? Okay, well, he's absolutely married. Okay, oh, look, I, maybe he's on the level, but I'm just saying, a man in his early 30s invites you to his apartment just to listen to music? It's just a cocktail party, and I love Jimmy, but my whole world has changed since I came to New York. And I really feel like I'm finally where I'm supposed to be. For the first time in my life, I'm excited about whatever's coming next. And Jimmy understands. He told me before he left. I'm just looking out for my girl, that's all. Just keep your eyes open. And nothing else. Dawn, come in. <laughs> you look lovely. Thank you. Please. Wow, your apartment is amazing. Thank you. Am, am I the first one to arrive? Oh, my friends try to outdo themselves. Who's most fashionably late? <laughs> They'll be in soon enough. Wine? Thanks. <laughs> well... To the arts. So, tell me the story of Don Cutler. <laughs> oh, I... I don't think you want to hear such a sad story before a party. <laughs> okay. Don, I want you to do something for me. Even if it scares the hell out of you, I want you to do it. What a... What do you want me to do? I want you to tell me the worst thing that's ever happened to you. If you want to be a singer, who matters? If you want to move people, you have to be honest with yourself. You have to be naked or else it's just notes in the air. I was kidnapped. Oh, God. No, but no, that's not the bad part. The bad part is that the family that I loved was torn apart. And I was sent to live with the worst people in the world. It's okay. The past is over. I want to help bring you back to a place of love. Your friends won't really be here any minute. Um, I have to confess something, too. When you accepted my invitation, I told them not to come. I wanted you all to myself. Is that selfish? since forever. But that's not how life goes. There's no 
greater ecstasy than two artists making love. And you can't sing about that ultimate moment of love if you haven't experienced it. But you have to be ready. And I just don't know. I don't know if you are. Michael. I'm ready for it. Okay, dish. We just talked and listened to records. <laughs> You're right. Okay, maybe we kissed a little. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, Alvin knows how to kiss a girl. <laughs> Alvin? I thought his name was Alan. Did I say Alvin? <laughs> no, no, no. You... He's definitely not a chipmunk. <laughs> hmm. What? No, I'm just... I'm just saying that I think you should keep an eye on this guy. I mean, we're talking about a man in his 30s, and you're still sweet 17. Hey, guys will say anything to get what they want. I really like this guy. You know, I... I could see myself really falling for him. Hey. I'm on your side. You don't need to make excuses for me. Maybe my future doesn't have to be tied to my past. Dear Don, I know the pillow's kind of corny, but I saw it and pictured you holding it at night when you're sleeping, since I can't be there. I miss you every day. Love, Jimmy. Welcome to my ho ho home. Oh my goodness, Michael, the tree, it looks beautiful. Oh, I wish you would have had me come over and help with all of this. Would have been fun. I wanted it to be a surprise. <laughs> and speaking of surprises, <laughs> Michael. You did not get me all of these gifts. And you can't open any of them until Christmas morning. Except for these two. Open the little one first. I love it. Thank you. Let's see here. Here we go. Love it so much. One more. Yeah? Is this gift for me or for you? Don't be ridiculous. It's not my size. 
Michael, this is really skimpy. If you come out, I promise you an even bigger surprise. this surprise i just landed the lead in the new fosse musical michael that's terrific oh it gets better i think i can get you a part in it come on you you can't be serious no that, that's too much to hope for i mean a broadway show together uh the lunts managed it the barrymores Sonny and Cher? That's a little different, don't you think? Why? They were all out of school and married. Come here. We have been one soul for months. I say it's time we make it official. Official? Do you, Michael Sutton, take this beautiful young singer? I do. And do you, Don Cutler, take this handsome <laughs> young man? I do. There's nothing left but the honeymoon. This has been every morning for the past three days. You don't have the flu. You know. I miss my period. I think it's time you told Alan. What are you doing here? I... There's something I wanted to talk to you about. I, I, I'm in a real rush. Let's say, uh, after six. Michael, I'm pregnant. Oh, God. Hey, look at me. Tell me you're not playing a trick on me. It's the best news ever. You thought I'd be upset, didn't you? Really not. I was sure you'd flip out. You're having my child, our child. How could I be anything but over the moon? <sighs> Come here. Sit down. You can calm down now. So 
so nervous. Oh my god, you have no idea. When school ends, you come and live with me. If if you want to. <laughs> hey, when the world needs to know, we'll announce it together. I really have to go. I I'll get your cat. You know what? I think we should get married. Before the baby comes. Before they even start showing. Why raise eyebrows, right? Oh, I can't wait to marry you. I love you, Michael. I love you too. Okay. I'll see you soon. Hey, I came to ruin your day. Not possible. <laughs> well, it's a good thing that you have Alan to brighten your day because word is spreading around campus that Mr. Wonderful is taking a hike. Mr. Wonderful? Mm, Michael Sutton. He got some play in England and left everyone in the lurch. Ugh, what a creep. The play's not in England. It's gonna be on Broadway. Well, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> He's gone now. No. No, 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 that, that can't be right. No, he... Well, what can I do for you, miss? Yeah, um, I I'm looking for Michael Sutton. Oh, Michael, yes, well, Michael's gone back to England. No, that can't... He lives here. You, you, you can't just come barging... This is his through... apartment. This is his furniture. Excuse me, this is all my... Furniture. I sublet the apartment to Michael. He couldn't. Miss, look, I drove Michael to the airport myself. Um, he's he's probably halfway across the Atlantic by now. Don. You really didn't think I'd go anywhere without you. Accident. Yeah, but it's okay. Nothing's broken. Uh, and the baby's doing fine. You've been here for a few days, but your friend is right. You got a nasty blow to your head, though. You got it by a car, but it just sideswiped you. Michael. Is that the last thing you remember? Hey, could you give us a minute? Okay. Oh, no. Shh. Trisha, I'm so stupid. I should have listened to you. Trisha, there's no Alan. It was always Michael Sutton. It's his baby. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? Michael swore me to secrecy. God, of course he did. I'm such an idiot. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's all gonna be okay. What are you doing here? 
I can't say I'm surprised to find you in your current condition. I assume you know who the father is. I know who he is. A fellow student? A random encounter? It doesn't matter. He's gone. <sighs> Not a surprise. I should tell you. I have withdrawn you from school. I can't have a cutler walking around as an unwed mother-to-be. So, once you're released from here, I'm sending you to the Meadows. What's the Meadows? The Meadows is my childhood home. It's a beautiful estate in Lynchburg, Virginia. And my sisters, Charlotte and Emily, still live there. Emily is a midwife. And if I refuse? Obviously, you're not going back to Cutler's Cove, so I don't see many other options for you. You will be taken care of better than you'll be taken care of anywhere else, and you'll be able to have your bastard there. <laughs> and then, well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. You can't make me go anywhere. I guess you forgot that I still know your secrets. If you're dumb enough to wag your tongue, you will get good suffering. When you're released from this hospital, you can either go to the meadows or to the street. That choice is yours. I pity you. Your life has been so miserable and so unhappy that your only joy is to make others feel that way too. I know what life has in store for you. You save your pity for yourself. Miss Cutler, the car to the airport is here. I'm trying to get a hold of my friend Trisha, but she's not picking up. She doesn't know where I'm going, but I'm sure she'll try to come visit me again. So, can you just please give her this note if she does? I beg you. Of course. You can call me Luther. I work for Miss Emily. Are you sure this is where Grandma Cutler asked you to bring me? This is it here. The Meadows. Your dog. I'm Emily Booth. You were to address me as Miss Emily. Understood? Follow me. May I please use your phone? We have no telephone. We live humble lives at the meadows. We get along just fine without electricity as well. Creature comforts lead to sloth. You'll be staying here. You'll wear this for the duration of your stay. The clothes you brought with you will have to be purified. Now, let me feel your belly. I'm sorry, but why? 
I'm a midwife, and I'll be the one seeing to your child's birth. Which, by the way, you can expect to be difficult. This child was conceived in sin. You don't even know me. I expect Lillian told you our other sister, Charlotte, also lives in this house. You are not to have any contact with her if I'm not present. Is that clear? Yes. You want to sleep now. We're up with the sun here. Charlotte? Charlotte needs to stay away from you. I had to warn you that your baby is going to be born with pointy ears. Just like mine was. Okay. Thanks. has a strange taste. Nothing strange about it. It's vinegar. In oatmeal? In everything. I put vinegar in all our food to remind us of the bitterness we must endure for the sins of our fathers. You get used to it. You begin with the floors. Once you're done, you can polish the silver, then start on the windows. So I'm a full-time servant? It's idle time that put you in the state you're in. I suggest you get to work. Luther, wait a minute. Can you do me a huge favor and drive me to town? I need to make a call. I ain't going that way. Okay, uh, what about tomorrow? Look, I said I ain't going that way. Luther, it's extremely important that I get in touch with a friend of mine. Listen, I just do what Miss Emily tells me to do. You understand? We are blessed to have such a vile sinner in our midst to remind us of the price of wanton hedonism. It's humility that leads us to the will of God. Amen. Amen. You cannot hide your shame. Repent, you sinner! I repent. Louder! I repent. Louder! I repent. Again! I repent. Louder! Again! I repent. Louder! I repent. I repent. Louder! I repent. What's this noise? Uh, Miss Emily, I'm, a, I'm having terrible cramps. I'm worried about the baby. No. Something feels wrong. What if my baby's dying? If it dies, it dies. Less wickedness in the world is a benefit to us all.
did you think you were going? We're miles from town. To think you could reach there in your condition in this weather. It's worth the risk. Oh, was it? You could easily have died out there. There are worse things. What are you doing here? You've no business in this room. You know you're not allowed on this side of the house. This was a nursery for Charlotte's baby, wasn't it? What happened to it? Like Charlotte said, the child was the devil's spawn. Took a single breath and promptly died. We prayed over it, then sent it back to Satan. <laughs> You've been trying to cause a miscarriage, haven't you? You think my baby is evil, so you starve me and overwork me and hope the baby won't survive it. If it lives. <laughs> It's by God's will, not mine.
Leave us. You're contracting. Now we'll see if you're strong enough to bear the burden of your guilt. The birth is breach. If you wanted to live, you'd better pray harder than you have in your whole life. I'll take it to the nursery. No. You're not taking Christy to that horrible place. Not there. I had another room cleaned in preparation. If you roll over on it in your sleep, you could kill it. says to drink this. Get your strength back. Where's my baby? Emily will be coming right along. Go on. Drink it. That's it. Good girl. Charlotte? I came across a picture with Emily and Lillian and another girl in a wheelchair. Her name was Eugenia. Oh, yeah. Poor Eugenia. She was our sister, too. She died of the smallpox before I come along. They named me Eugenia when I was born. Oh, I like Dawn much better for you. Where is she? Where is my baby? The child was born too small. Therefore, it wasn't supposed to be born at all. I've made arrangements for you to leave tomorrow. You're a liar. What did you do to my daughter? Shot it? Talk to me. She's gone now. I am asking you to leave. I'm not going anywhere until I have a look around. Jimmy? Jimmy! Dawn! Dawn? Jimmy! Oh, no. No, no. What the hell have they done to you? Tell me you're really here. I'm here. Tell me I'm not dreaming. No, I'm here. I'm here. It's okay. How did you find me? Your friend, Trisha. She got your note. I'm here. It's okay. Jimmy, they took her. They took my baby. We're leaving. Where's Don's baby? My sister Lillian made all the arrangements before that girl ever arrived. The baby was taken, that's all I know. He's still alive. Do you take me for a murderer? You're gonna die one day, Emily. And I feel bad for the devil. Mad 
imagine spending forever in hell with you? Let's get you out of here. Not only did Dad remarry, but they had another kid. What? A boy. Another long chin. Yeah. Jimmy, I'm sorry. I don't even know how to ask you to forgive me. For what? I betrayed you with that monster, Michael. I am so, so sorry. You don't even know how much. I was so stupid. It's not your fault. Of course it's my fault. Don't. I don't blame you. Think of everything you've been through. If it still matters, I choose you. Where to? Cutler's Cove. ghost town in here. Randolph. Don, I wasn't expecting you. Where is everyone? What's going on? It's just the strangest thing. Mother's never been sick a day in her life. I have to make sure everything's in order by the time she gets back. Did you know produce has gone up 10%? Don. Oh, I'm so glad to see you've come back. The family should be together in times like this. In times like what? Where's Lillian? Lillian, wake up. Mm. Eugenia. That's right. You haven't gotten rid of me yet. I am so glad you remember who I am. I'm glad the stroke didn't take away your memories. I sent you here to the meadow. That's right. And you did to my daughter exactly what you did to me. You disposed of her. And now you're going to tell me where she is. You are my curse. Where is my daughter, Lillian? Save at least a part of your soul. You'll never escape me. Lillian. No, Lillian! Where is she? Tell me where she is! What did you do to my baby? What did you do to my baby? talked in so long and the way we left things after the whole thing was a big misunderstanding i understood it i said everything i had to say and if you're smart you'll stay far away from me we're family don there's no way to escape that mama doesn't like wearing black does she Purnell? <laughs> No one changes quicker than you, Mother. The funeral was this morning, Dawn. Your grandmother's gone, and we still have a hotel to run. And I know how you felt about her, so don't pretend you care about appearances. I wouldn't shed a tear for that woman if a gun was to my head. I just wonder if you know where I've been the past nine months. 
Or if you even knew if I was alive or dead. <clears throat> we were told you were someplace safe. And you were the one who got yourself into trouble, Don. I will not take the blame for that. You have a granddaughter, Laura Jean. Her name is Christy. Did you know Lillian was going to take her away from me? Do you have any idea where she could be? How would I know what your grandmother's plans are? You knew it when she took me away. It is over and done with. Why can't you just be thankful for what you have and start anew? I won't start anything until I get Christy back. Recognize a blessing when you see it. No wealthy suitor's gonna want to marry a woman with a baby. Get yourself a cat. As of today, they're allowed in here again. Is that Lillian's brooch? Not anymore. Right? I promise you I had absolutely no idea. Your grandmother assured me that the baby's mother was cooperating fully. I don't blame you, Mr. Updike. Well, I have all the information you need. I found the family that has your daughter. They're upset, naturally, but they're expecting to hear from you. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. Who are they? Well, I will give you all of that information after the reading of the wills. Please, I, I just want to go now. Please, just trust me. You'll want to wait until after the reading. As you know, I am the executor of Lillian Cutler's estate. So I am here to read her last will and testament. As well as that of her late husband, William Cutler. Well, uh, did you say William? His will was read years ago. Well, that is true. However, there was an addendum to be read only after the passing of his late wife, Lillian. We've now arrived at that occasion. You'll have to excuse me. I will continue. The salient information is that William confesses in the document that he fathered a second child and that the child was conceived with his son Randolph's wife, Laura Jean. <laughs> I don't understand. I am very sorry to be the one to deliver this news, Randolph. But to be absolutely clear, the child William and Laura Jean conceived was Don. It was William's wishes that Don be the recipient of 60% of his property and holdings. Meaning, to put it simply, no matter how Lillian's 40% is divided, Don is now the majority owner of Cutler's Cove. What are you talking about? She didn't even know she was a Cutler for most of her life. It's totally unfair. <laughs> is that why you let them kidnap me? Because you were afraid it would come out that you seduced your father-in-law? You don't know anything about it. I'm sorry for what happened to you, Don. You didn't deserve it. What happened with the will? William left me the majority of everything. So the baton got passed to you. But not to me. I don't want it. The only thing I'm interested in is getting back to my daughter. I don't care about Cutler's Cove or Cutler money. It could all wash away into the sea as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to find my daughter. Something you never bothered to do. <laughs> You listen to me. She's not Cutler. And anyway, this place belongs to me. A real, true Cutler. Let's go get Christy. I 
I wanted my life with Jimmy and Christy to begin on a happy note. And I was so close to holding Christy in my arms. But Clara Jean's screams of hatred echoed in my mind. She had always hated me. And now she would never give up trying to ruin my life. Please step forward. The three of you are very good. However, the remaining students behind you will be my class this semester. <laughs> my character, Michael Sutton, plays drama teacher in this new hip drama school, School for the Arts in New York City. And Don comes as a senior she's sort of a fish out of water but michael recognizes her talent kind of takes her under his wing and we're not sure of his motives might not be the greatest guy in the world i'm grappling with that joey mcintyre well you know i was kind of starstruck when i first met joey mcintyre from new kids on the block and honestly i didn't know what to expect i knew he could sing been listening to him sing since I was quite a bit younger, and I'd seen his videos on YouTube. I know he had a great voice, but I didn't know if he could act, and he can, and he did a great job. It was a pleasure having him on set. He plays a villain, but like a really charming villain that the main character who we love falls for, and we totally understand why. Well, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'll see you in class. You, you weren't interrupting anything important. <laughs> you know, I do have an hour to kill before my next appointment. Grab a coffee? Talk about that voice of yours? It's been a lot of fun playing this kind of drama. It's a period piece that takes place in the 70s. I've never really done anything like this. I have a lot of kissing scenes with Joey McIntyre from New Kids on the Block, Michael Sutton. We kept clinking teeth, which looks like the most awkward thing. And they're supposed to be like these very like beautiful lovey-dovey scenes and we would just like hit teeth and I would start cracking up because that's like one way to take you out of a kiss. What are you doing here? I can't say I'm surprised to find you in your current condition. I assume you know who the father is. I know who he is. A fellow student? A random encounter? It doesn't matter. He's gone. <sighs> Not a surprise. Lillian is the matriarch of the story. She's the grandmother of Dawn. She runs the show, basically, with an iron fist. How lucky are we that we got to work with Donna Mills? Donna Mills is a legend, like she is a treasure. Donna Mills is somebody that the fans of these books and these stories grew up watching on television in soap operas, which were during that time period, those were the melodramas. She really is, in a lot of ways, the grandmother of the genre. Lillian wants things done her way, and only her way. And Lillian has secrets, many deep, dark secrets that aren't going to be found out by anyone if she has anything to say about it. And one of the things about shooting these movies, at times, you would be shooting in the 1970s in one scene and then switch to the 1980s. So we had a lot of quick changes and quick 
set dressings changing and hair changing and makeup and costume changing and characters changing um, literally from movie to movie and time period to time period. So that's just an incredibly talented crew that was all working together. It's hard not to take advantage of this set and living in the 70s. So the minute I got on this set, I just kept thinking of John Travolta and staying alive. It's been really fun. Everyone is is so wonderful and, and has a good time while we're working, which is great. The most fun has probably been how many pairs of very tight pants appear, <laughs> um, which gives us all a lot of good laughs. <laughs> What the hell is she getting all new clothes? When you think about costumes, you often think about the female costumes as being the crazy costumes, but there were a lot of crazy guy costumes. Wow. This movie, Kobe, at first, who plays Jimmy, he's playing a teenager, so he's, like, outgrowing all of his clothes. They haven't maybe got enough money to get the next size up, so he almost seems like a young man that's kind of bursting out of his kids' clothes. But then Dane, who plays Philip is in a lot of tight pants because he's a ladies' man and he's incredibly confident with his body and his clothes. So, you know, all of his fashion sort of expressed that. It was really fun portraying that time period uh, in New York City. It was really fun having Fran Drescher in all of those costumes. She's such a gem in general, but getting to see her play a multitude of different characters in the short period of time that we had her in that role was really fun. Have fun. Enjoy. Thanks for watching. <laughs>